We now welcome UFC welterweight Mike Perry. Mike, thank you for the time today, sir. Yo, you're welcome. Thank you. We will take the first set of questions from Gabriel Gonzalez with Cape Side Press. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for asking. Um, I think we all knew you were never going to let Darren Till into your corner, but do you ever take any other offers seriously? Because I'm sure they must have come in. Um, yeah, I mean, I took some into consideration, but it, uh, it didn't really, it didn't really work out. Uh, so, you know, just moved on from it. A lot of people were looking forward to a banger between you and Robbie. Can you just discuss the adjustment to preparing from him to now Tim Means? Um, I think it's a it's very similar fight. Um, still a banger. Another dude uh, who's going to throw some hands. Means got some sharp boxing. It's a little different boxing. It's more points, which makes it more difficult. I think Robbie trying to throw some heat at my head would would have made it easier to um, hit him with a harder shot. Uh, the final one, people are obviously still going to be fascinated with your corner. Um, very bluntly, are they there as much for advice or is it more moral support and you're just handling this by yourself on Saturday? Yeah, you already know. Um, this is all me. This is what I do. Platinum martial arts. Um, I got the love of my life. That's the most important thing to me, you know, that's motivational and like, uh, I guess moral support, you know, and um, I just want those people closest to me, the people that I feel are important to me to be the ones to deserve to sit by me and watch this, uh, you know, watch me try to do something special. That's all for me. Thank you, Mike. We will take the next set of questions from Simon Savano with MMA Junkie. Hey, Mike, when we uh, last saw you in the cage, you had a nice win against Mickey Gall. And then after that, you know, we saw the video of what happened at the restaurant. You know, we know that you reportedly uh, went through alcohol dependency treatment. Um, and of course, there were allegations of domestic violence by your ex-wife. Do you feel fortunate to still be on this card and in the situation being able to compete on Saturday night? Um. You know, I feel that the truth um, is always, you know, out there. And um, yeah, man, I mean, I'm grateful for my opportunities, especially with all the things that seem to come against me. I'm still here, but, you know, I just, um, I believe that I'm a good person and uh, I don't mean no harm on nobody unless we signed a death waiver. The um, the allegations that were made by uh, your ex-wife, they're quite serious. Um, and we haven't heard from you publicly uh, since then, aside from a statement that came from your Twitter account. Um, do you deny the allegations that were made by her? And if so, why do you think Danielle would lie about that? Uh, yes, I deny the allegations that, you know, our relationship, uh, if you want to call it that, was had its ups and downs and um you know <clears throat> it's long past due like this we've been legally divorced um and there's just nothing uh really to back what she is saying maybe looking i'm i don't you know it's um i hope she can move forward and, um, you know, find some better life for herself. You know, we obviously heard her side, um, and I, I was just wondering, we haven't heard your side. Can you explain one of the things that happened the night, the 911 call that was made by your mom? What led to that situation that night? Man, my mom is um, a savage, man. She, she, uh, I've never disrespected my mother that night only and that was by revving my engine and uh you know i i drove across her grass so she called the cops on me did it do anything to hear did, 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 did it do anything to give my mom a bunch of money 
for that. You know, she did that to me because she know y'all go ask her. I've never, ever disrespected my mother. That was the only time ever. And it wasn't even, I just revved my engine. Like, I do that on the regular. So, my mom knows what, what's up. What led to that situation that night, though? Obviously, we know what Danielle claims. She said you, you assaulted her that night. Do you care to share what led to her being no, barricaded no, in your mom's home? I don't believe that uh, you have that correct because I did not assault her that night. Um, and, you know, I don't believe that necessarily those allegations were made about the night that that 9-1 call took place because the night that that took place, uh, what happened was Danielle just went over to my mother's house and I went over to talk to my mother to tell her to come outside and speak to me. And um, my mom said no. So I was like, what the heck? Like, can we have a conversation? What's going to happen? So, you know, my mom got upset with me because um, just I was mad that she wouldn't go tell her to uh, tell that girl to come outside and have a conversation with me. Like, whatever. It's cool. Did, did, did it do anything to you, though, to hear your mom say that she feared for her life because, no, because, because you? She's always been overdramatic and acting up since, you know, her and my dad had me because my dad was a wild dude. So she always expected, you know, something from me. And that's probably one of the reasons that I never, ever disrespected my mother, ever. I just, you know, she looked out for me all the time growing up, and I tried to look out for her since a young age. Um, you know, my mom's a hard worker. She's been a server for a long time. I always tip my servers well because I want people to tip my mom well, you know what I mean? I got respect for my mom, especially as a martial artist. I mean, this is, that's one thing that we do martial arts for is like, you know, we want to say about our mom's kids that, you know, our mom raised some tough kids or she, she, uh, she means business. You see what I'm saying? That's what happened with the 911 call. She was like, like I said, the, the first time I've ever even looked at my mom sideways by driving across the, uh, driving across the yard, she called the cops and said she feared for her life. That's my mom. She's sorry now. She know it come out. She ain't never had nothing she said come out. Now she's thinking about it. But it's all good because she was going for the, the jugular. You know what I mean? She was like, shoot, I'm going to get you in trouble then. So that's a, a mom don't play. I don't play with moms. I ain't, I ain't playing. And the la last thing for me, Mike, um, you know, we know that you're expecting your first child and congratulations on that. Fans have... Fans have come to know you as sort of this wild man. Um, you know, we've seen things that have happened outside the octagon. How do you expect fatherhood will change you? Well, uh, I'm a, you know, we're going to practice with this first baby boy. You know, I guess we were just talking about this. Little, a baby boy is a little easier. Um, you know, it's a boy. You can be tougher on him and things like that. So, but. We're going to get our lives together a little more and more, a little more organized so that, you know, we can give our son a little sister and uh, have to have things more put together to be a girl dad and have a daughter and things like that. So I have ideas and, you know, I just want to make something beautiful like my baby mama. She's so beautiful. So I want to, I want to put beautiful things out into the world. I'm sure our son is going to be a handsome little devil. For sure. So, you know, uh, just excited, man, to see where life takes us and, and how we're going to have fun together um, all the different ways since we're going to have kids and family. And my girl just, you know, she seemed to grow up a lot overnight. So, you know, it's, maybe it's the, the mom is really coming out of her. So now she acts like my mom sometimes. Call the cops on me for sure. Y'all worry about that. Well, I appreciate you taking my questions. Thanks. Yeah, I don't care.
We'll take the next set of questions from Stephen Morocco with MMA Fighting. Hey, Mike, can you hear me okay? Yep. Um, just to follow up a little bit on what Simon was asking, um, did, uh, where, where do things stand now with your mom? Have you guys reconciled? Yeah, man. My mom's good, bro. So, you know, I'm looking forward to the holidays after this fight. I'm go see family, eat some Thanksgiving. I'm cutting this weight. You you seem more calm than I've I, I can remember seeing you, in terms of your demeanor and and the way you're approaching, uh, the media. What is is there something different about you? Did did things change after you went to treatment? After you got serious with, with Latori? After, uh, the the baby, the news of the baby. You know, being with Latori, um, you know I think she's so smart and how she keeps things simple and tries to stay lax and you know I don't know I just I can see things in, in a lot of fighters and athletes and things like that and I'm trying to the way I described it was like go by Mike Perry things like that but my girl calls me Michael I'm trying to be more Michael these days and, you know just be composed and I believe I'll fight that way too. Is that better for for you in the cage? You think? Have you experienced that yet, or you thought about how that's going to affect the way you go after your opponents? Yeah, you saw a little bit of it in the Mickey Gall fight. I believe that I was. Yes, I still put pressure and walk them down, but it's with the uh, I'll slip a shot or. I try to throw at the same time they throw. I try to throw that counter shot, pick off what they're going to throw. Just trying to, like, with forward pressure, not trying to force the shot, but it just comes to me. You know, I can't really explain it. It's just some angles that I see that I try to hit on people. And it goes in with the whole discussion of, like, calm, composed, poised, and like being under control of the situation, how radical it gets. And then being ready for that too, like that's still there, you know what I mean? That's always going to be there inside of me. So I let it out when I need to serve some energy, especially for Saturday. And can you tell us about this other corner that you have uh, besides Latori? Yeah, my boy Matthew. Um, He's a good guy, and uh, he just, um, he kind of just fell into the situation, and, um, you know, he's he's helped out with um, me and Latori and, and helped us out, uh, so, um, you know, he, he's, he knows my boy Alex, and um, me and Alex have been working to be in the corner for this weekend or whatever, and... Uh, you know, I don't know what's going on with that, but <clears throat> just I wanted to give my buddy an opportunity and, you know, I'm going to go to work on Saturday, me and the team. Is he from the fighting world or is he just a friend? Um, I mean, he knows some things about fighting, but he's not really, I mean, he's in the world now, isn't he? I like to do that. I like to bring people in. We thought my girl had no experience, but look at her now. Her and my son already got a win in the UFC, corner, handling business. And last one for me. Um, fr from the things I was seeing online, it seemed like Darren actually wanted to corner you. He he wanted to help you out. He He wants to see you be successful. You know, despite all the back and forth you guys have had verbally on, on, on Twitter and whatnot, he, he wanted to help you out and he wanted to be there for you. Was there, does that mean anything to you? Was there ever any thought in your mind that, you know, maybe I should bury the hatchet and give yeah. this guy a chance? Was it just sort of a stunt? How did, how did you feel about it? It's a, it's an understanding between martial artists. Um, when you see something that you have to respect, respect it. So the way he sees me because I've busted his face before and you know 
do have a type of respect for him. I know he's capable. I know he's uh, he is skilled. Sure, I can't take that away from him. No matter how much of a piece of shit I think he, is. so you know, but that doesn't change the fact. None of it matters. Thank you, Mike. We will take our last set of questions from Mike Bond with USA Today. Mike, just one for you. I know you said earlier uh, you still had 20 pounds left to cut. How's the cut going? Are you at, you know, where you want to be right now, or is this a little further behind than where you'd typically be at this point? You know, it is what it is. I I have to be on weight on Friday morning. So if I have to, you know, over the years, I think I did it a little early because I just didn't want to have to do it last minute. But since I've gotten better, since I understand the process more um, mentally, I can I can wait, and so I still have like twenty that I'm gonna plan on cutting like last minute and then get on the scale and then do it up. Any worry about that amount, or are you thinking it's gonna be okay? I mean, I understand hard work. So it's not really, I'm worried. I am curious if I, if I thought that I have gotten bigger, but I know I can do it. I know I can, I work hard and my body is like, my body cooperates. I feel like I'm built properly and that's why I can eat whatever I want most of the time. Like really, I, I don't diet at all for fights anymore. I just eat whatever I want. Like this morning I had. And I kind of like good, healthy food sometimes. This morning I had a spinach wrapped egg white and turkey bacon a burrito. And it's pretty good. But, and I also ran six miles today. And that was no sweat. All right. Well, I'll let you get to the rest of that weight then. Appreciate the time, Mike. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mike. That is all the questions we had for you, sir.